Texas one ones happening tonight. Right, yeah, yeah. Part of that. So whenever that pops up, I'll uh, have to say good. I'll bid you adieu, but I'm down to All right. happen until then. So beer mm -hmm. one on one is happening out there in the world, but for our purposes, this is the Massachusetts Beer Reviews and Company Wednesday night show. I am Thomas Metal Seventy Five. Sure send them our best, Red. Yes, do Got that. It, guys. And this is Thomas Metal Seventy Five for Massachusetts Beer Reviews today. We have a panel of people, one of which should be Jerry Ford at some point in time. We have from uh, left to right on the bottom of the screen, we got John O'Neill in uh, the state of Georgia. We got Michael Kormoroff to his right, Brooklyn, New York. We got Red Beard up there in uh, the great white north of Canada. We got Jay Terrio, Louisiana Beer Reviews. We got William Kepley from the Carolinas, and this is... A wheat beer examination. Oh, no. <laughs> I said Carolina's to save my own ass on that one. Hello, everybody. I, uh, <laughs> I'm straddling the state line. Got it. South. And uh, I guess, uh, I guess, left to right, uh, John O'Neill. Which beer are you presenting this evening? Um, hear me okay? I'm having a really hard time hearing you guys. We can hear you just fine. Okay, I'm good. All right. Well, the beer, huh, the beer that I'm doing tonight is uh, the Yingling Summer Wheat. Wow, summer wheat beer. That's got to be a little old. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the uh, Franz O'Connor Hefeweizen beer that uh, I think is excellent. So, um, I've had a couple of them. Uh, I think I had it last year too, but it's it's relatively new in my area and uh, it's pretty tasty. So I'm going to do this one tonight. Excellent. What do you have, uh, Michael Kormoroff? I have, and I know Jay's done a review of this, so he's familiar with it. It's from Germany and Walter is Walter's Wiesen. Oh, yes. Wiesen. 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 Yes. Excellent. Bye. 5.3 ABV. And off camera, Red Beer says he doesn't have a wheat beer, but he must be drinking something this evening. What you got, sir? I uh, Actually, I have to go to the fridge and crab. I'm going to be drinking a Lake Effect IPA by Great Lakes Brewery here in uh, nice. Ontario. Excellent. Show that in a second. But, yeah. gonna do, but hold on. Y'all are going to do Erdinger, right? And that's a wheat beer, right? Okay. Um, is it? I don't even know. I've never had it before, but I that is what we're doing. So I think so, yeah. There you go. There you go. If, okay. I, if, I had, if I hadn't already committed my wheat beer to that program, then I'd, I'd have it with you for sure. <laughs> Excellent. You can't yeah. do it all. You can't do it all. Hey, uh, Eric, I have one from 1995. Oh, that's an old beer. Yeah, but this, that's when the brand came out. This is a fresh beer. It's very fresh because it's Best by June. It's Blue Moon. There you go. American classic, I suppose, yeah. Yes. Is that owned by some big company, Jay? Uh, Coors, Molson, Molson Coors. Yeah, Coors, Coors started it in 1995. Okay. What do you got, uh, William Kepley, this evening? Uh, speaking of Blue Moon, I have it's Ooh. cousin. That's right. Shock top. No. Distant relative. Oh, Blue, Blue Key. Blue Key is a private label Blue Moon clone from the little supermarket chain, German Moon. Supermarket chain which is in the United States in the past year. Excellent. Right. Six pack for three for three ninety nine. I want to check those out. Wait a minute if I ever run across that stuff. We have Jerry Fort from the Beer Review Guy on YouTube. Good evening, Jerry Fort. Hey guys. Hi Jerry. How's it? Hi. Which uh, wheat beer do you have this evening to present? I've got the uh, I've got the Ho Garden. Oh, nice. Yeah. Whoa. Excellent. The, that, the, that's cool. Uh Jerry. Hey Jerry. Hey Jay. I got another I got another Blue Moon product for you all. Um not Blue Moon Belgian White. Um I kind of did a little bit of a twist on that. This is the Blue Moon White IPA. Oh, this yeah. is the oh, only yeah. problem. The only problem with this, besides the fact, well, there is no problem with it. Um, when I say that it is 5.9% alcohol by volume and it's a white IPA, 
but it is from November 13th, 2017. And this was in their Brewer Select um, category of beers, which apparently <clears throat> this particular version is not available in that variety anymore. So it's an old beer. Go figure. And it was in the beer cooler. Go figure. I've had one of them already, so I know it doesn't taste old or anything like that. But the new one that they have in their Brewers Project is, or Brewers Select right now is a Pacific Apricot Wheat. So when I saw this, as opposed to the Apricot Wheat, I said, mm, why not? I had, I, got, I had that one. It was good. I got to randomly quickly ask, what the hell YouTube channel are we live on right now? This is Thomas Metal 75. Thomas Metal 75. How the hell am I not subscribed to that? I don't know. You should uh, do that. That would uh, oh, yeah, it happen. <laughs> Let me type it in for you on our chat there. There you go. <laughs> Massachusetts Beer Reviews. He's been on YouTube for years. But that's, what that's what I thought, yeah. I'm going to enjoy this in a vine mm. stiff on her glass. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what's everybody's experiences drinking the wheat beers? Let's start Not with... Uh, yeah, Redbeard, go ahead. All right, so I was just going to jump in. Um, I've never been a huge fan of them. They're kind of hit or miss for me, but they're drinkable. Just they've never been a style I've gravitated towards or anything at all myself. That's my experience. I don't really like wheat beers, but uh, I can tolerate them. <laughs> it tastes like Cheerios <laughs> or, or Wheaties, something like that. They're okay. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Jerry Fort? What, what's your thoughts and experiences on wheat ales and wheat lagers? Um, as far as um, as far as I can remember, um, the two years that I've really been delving into wheat beers, I've I've liked them. They've never really had that wow factor, but they've been you know good enough just to sit back and relax and to drink. But they're just not really that big, you know, to me. But they're drinkable. I like them. What, uh, what uh, thoughts thoughts from Michael Kormoroff on wheat beers? I, I, like them as a, I like them as a style as long as the um, taste profile doesn't get crazy with all the typical ones in, in one time at a time. Like, in other words, I can stand banana, bubble gum, and some of the other ones. I just don't like it when it's centric on one. Sure. I like the, I like the variety and the blend better. Uh, I apologize. I, I literally from left to right skipped John and Neil. What is, what are your his what's your history and, and thoughts on wheat ales or beers going into this discussion? He can't hear us, so he's. <clears throat> oh man, he must be on the four four G. Okay, we'll skip to uh, William Kepley for now. What are your thoughts and history with uh, wheat beers? Uh echo some of the other sentiments it's, it definitely wouldn't be one of my favorite styles of beer i wouldn't go out of my way to get one i would drink one in the summertime they can be yeah. rather refreshing to me the the wheat beers are sort of like an eight and eight football team you know they're not terrible they're not great they're just sort of middle of the road <laughs> so that's that's probably where they would slot in in my drinking preferences too got you can you hear us uh no he just turned his microphone off i just sent him an, i sent him a note i wonder if he's looking at it Okay, so my experience with wheat beers are that they were one of those styles of beers that really got me into drinking bigger and better beers in craft beer. Probably one of the first real beers that I fell in love with, perhaps after Guinness, was maybe Sierra Nevada Kelterweiss, which I actually think one of our <laughs> panelists may be bringing that this evening, but that one kind of changed me a little bit. And then we went to uh, your. I went. I went with the craft beers to Europe in, in at the beer store and found some wine stiff on her and kind of uh, opened my, my 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 brain up a little bit to bigger and better beers. And I think they're really great beers. The wheat style, if they're not too too alcoholic or bitter, I think they're really good in being a great base for starting in your craft beer journey. Others can be more flavorable in flavor some than others but you know it's a great place to start if you don't know where to start with craft beer is what i would say mm -hmm. i just think that they have too fluffy of a mouthfeel it's like it's like you're eating wonder bread or something you know <laughs> is but that I just, yeah i don't like it i mean it's, i mean this one is nice i, I did a swish well, of beer. 
I did a swish and pour, and all these chunks came in the beer, so it's yeah. full of yeast chunks. I mean, look at this thing. So, yeah, it's got all that. It it has a, a pretty interesting aroma. You know, it's got the orange peel. It's got the coriander. It's got a nice body, I guess, but I like to eat bread. I don't like to drink wheat bread. You know what I mean? I, I, Does it Jace, look? Jace just made a pretty uh, valid comment. Yeah. Uh, he likes wheat beers that use fruit additions, like adjuncts. For me, those are the fruit beers that I can enjoy a lot more when they've got like fruit added in there to make it more summertime refreshing -y kind, yep. I guess you could say. Well, it's Technically, Jay's beer has Valencia orange peels, but that's sort of a stereotypical kind of a flavor to add into the beer. So what do you think with the Blue Moon Jay? Yeah, but it's and, got spices too, coriander, what now? So what do you think, maybe even um, William Kepley as well, because they're similar enough beers. What do, you, what do you think of the aroma and what do you think of the taste? And do you think that that's a, a fair use? Do you think that's a fair use of, of using the oranges and the adjuncts? Do you like that added to the beer? What's your overall thoughts on the on the Blue Moon Jay and then William Kepley on the Blue Key? I can go fast. Sure. The, the aroma's <laughs> fine. You know, you get that mild orange peel. You get the coriander. It's very mild. The flavor, you know, so they use oats as well in this. So um, it's it's got a lot of yeast flavor. It's got... I was saying this when I did my solo review of it because I bought two cans because it was cheaper if you bought two cans. You know, <clears throat> it does taste kind of like Cheerios. Mm. Uh, the body's a little heavy. I don't like the fact that it's 168 calories, so it's sort of a fattening beer. Um, I always I copied this from Chad Polins, but he was right years ago. Chad's beer reviews. He said these wheat beers taste um, fluffy. Um, it... <laughs> It's fine. I mean, I can see why it's popular. My daughter loves Blue Moon. She gives it an A. Yeah, I see. And um, she, I like the Blue Moon variants better than this one. Like, but they're like less wheat beer. They're not as much of a wheat beer. Like the the red, the farmhouse red ale, and the at Mountain Abbey ale, and the Blue Moon, the one they IPA. That one's all right. It's too much bread though. And then the uh, the proximity that they made with the wine grapes and the uh the graffiti series they made with wine grapes but those were better to me because they weren't as much of a wheat beer so uh <clears throat> it's all right like william said it's like watching the saints the last three years before this season seven and nine you know i was like mm. but i don't go run out and buy wheat beers on purpose i only bought it because you wanted to do a hangout and i said i'll do a revisit but i never actually go to the store and say Oh boy, I want to buy a wheat beer. I always say, "Oh damn, a wheat beer." I guess I would do it. <laughs> Jay, what's the a, what's the ABV on that one? Five point four. Okay, so uh, respectable amongst the uh, American mass produced beer. Yeah. Yeah, nine IBUs and uh, shock top. It's fine. People say, "Oh, it's macro," but that's really kind of an irrelevant comment because. I know Anheuser-Busch started Shock Top, and I know Core started Blue Moon. But the reason they started that is because they could see that the specialty beer market was growing. And so they started it. And they can do fine work, and they did. So, But that's it. I mean, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. It's not my thing. Yeah. Okay? And I, I think William's going to say the same thing, but he he's – He's drinking at like a inferior substitute, but then he paid a lot less as well. So, so. explain the beer of Blue Key. I don't think it is inferior. I think they've cloned oh. it so well that I don't think I could tell the difference between the two. You ought to do a channel and do a blind taste test. It really, they, you know, they, they, you know, for a knockoff, it, it's a very accurate knockoff. And for someone who drinks like myself, adjunct lagers on a regular basis, this is sort of a gateway. You know, I, I find it sort of interesting. There's a the orange, the zestiness of it, the spiciness. I think this one is more of a white bready type flavor profile rather than I've had drinks some wheat ale that tastes like if you know what Roman meal bread is. Yes. The whole wheat type. This one I get the breadiness of it, but it's more of a white bread. And for me, you know, it's like I said, it's an eight and eight. It's av you know, but I may enjoy it more because. For someone, it's it's a little different coming from this, from the macro loggers, 
So, so you know, it's okay. Yeah. But I don't like it as much as I do the IPAs and some of the more malt four beers like the uh, Bach beers, the uh, styles like that. The extra special bitters, I like those a lot, the malt four beers. So this one's sort of, this is sort of hover somewhere in the middle. William, what's the ABV anyway. of that one? The same as Jay's? Or it's also 5.4. Okay. Hey, can you guys can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah, yes. there you go. All right, you fine all along. Can well, we? I couldn't hear you guys, so I can hear you perfectly now. It was a piece of crap laptop I was using. All right, wasn't, uh, excellent. Let, let, let's see if you let's see if you can get the question now. The question to you is is uh, what is your experience with wheat beers? What's your thoughts on wheat beers, and what are you bringing this evening for the discussion? Uh, well, my overall thought uh, on wheat beers is that they're very pleasant, very mellow, easy drinking. They're not the boldest beers usually. There are some that are, um, you know, pretty bold, but on average, they're just uh, an easy drinking, very mellow, light style beer. Uh, the beer that I decided to bring to the party this evening is the Yingling Summer Wheat, oh, which uh, that's a good one. It's one of my favorite wheat beers. Uh, as of late, uh, I really enjoy the Franz O'Connor uh, Hefeweizen, which uh, this reminds me a lot of that. And it's actually, I think, $2 cheaper in my area. So um, my thoughts are wheat beers are great. I wouldn't drink them every day, uh, but the very good style and a very pleasant and easygoing style. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Um, I guess I'll get this. Blue Moon out of the way since you're talking about Blue Moon and Blue Key. So this is, again, it's their white IPA. Blue so it's in their IPA? Yes, and it's really? it's in their um, Brewer Select <clears throat> series. It was it was brewed in – this one was bottled in November. Again, they don't really – they don't produce this one anymore, so they're just trying to get rid of stock. But it doesn't taste old or off or foul in any way from being in November, so that's good. This one is 5.9%. There you go. For Michael Komaroff, he likes to keep the notes, tasting notes of everybody, so that's pretty cool. He likes to keep the score like in baseball. This one says brewed with coriander and orange peel, and it's 184 calories. They say on the <coughs> website just a little bit, which is somewhere here, that it is 45 IBUs, and they use Huel, H-U-E-L-L, -L, melon hop from Germany as their twist on things. Whole, whole melon. That's actually hilarious. That's that's one of the hops that me and the albino mm -hmm. rhino used in our beer that we brewed on uh, Wednesday at the Cayman Kettle in uh, Niagara Falls. Well, that's, that's their twist, and they're also using Simcoe, Cascade, and Citra with wheat really and cool. oats. So it's almost it's like it, amazing. It's almost like in the ingredients list there, it could have been practically considered a New England IPA, to be completely honest. That's really cool. Um, right? You got the cloudy body. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. You could see some sediment a little bit there at the bottom, yeah. I can see it. It was a fluffier head, as you can tell, but it's still leaving a lot of lacing. And for me, for me, you're getting, you're getting the wheat. And and the you're getting mostly the yeast component. The yeast component to me is a very uh, black pepper corn kind of a spice there mixed with the coriander. So for <laughs> me on the nose, I am getting the wheat elements. I'm getting some grassy earthiness from the hops. Maybe a little bit of a of a tropical uh, tropical citrus note. Um, maybe a little bit of pine, but to be completely honest, with the wheat beer element and those spices of a white ale, it kind of reminds me not only of a white beer and an IPA, but a little bit of a Saison in the nose, which is quite unique for Blue Moon of all things. Let's see if it does that in the taste. Cheers. Beer Analysis 101 chat thing you just came up, so I have to bid you all adieu, like I said. Okay, I'm, I'm going to watch the playback tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by, Ray. Cool, cool. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, let Thanks me know in advance it. next time what you're going to be having, and uh, maybe I can actually get in on it. Bring it very right – next week we're doing a very tall beer, so any tall beer you can get, bring it. <laughs> it's just, just, just a tall beer, that's it? Yeah, you can use your imagination on what to bring.
You that can is bring random, but big okay. Ones, real big ones, anything over 16 ounces. I've got yeah. mine ready to go. Red I'm down. I'm down. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks Cheers. Uh, Peace out. See you, man. Now, Eric, I can't yeah. hang on. I can't stay on this too long tonight because I have a very important Canadian whiskey taste challenge tomorrow uh, at dawn. I have a showdown at dawn, so. So you're in. Jay's in training. Wow. <laughs> I am in training, and I've been. Uh, I've been. Uh, Making a lot of gains. Uh, Johnny Neal knows this. I've been making a lot of gains. Uh, I'm able. I was able the last two times to guess which was which within ten seconds on aroma only. Very good. Uh, all right. Well, I'm I'm impressed. I, I think. Proud. I think with the aroma on this white IPA, if if I stuck my nose in it and and, and just kind of blindfolded myself and didn't know it was Blue Moon or a white IPA, I again. I said I mentioned saison there in the nose, and I might actually think it was a saison with those with those spices and that um, and that black peppercorn kind of a note to it. Eric, I think Blue Moon does a great job with their lineup because they operate they operate as practically an independent company. They have their own yeah. they have their own production team, and they. They're so innovative. They've been doing this for 23 years. They come up with all kind of stuff that a lot of other people wouldn't think of doing. Yeah, this is th th this is excellent as far as Blue Moon is concerned. <laughs> I mean, it's leaps and bounds above just Blue Moon white beer. And and for me, there's a even though it's 45 IBUs, I think some of that some of that yeast character is, is playing a lot into the bittering because I'm getting those spicy yeasty notes and the peppercorn notes, but I'm also getting all of those hops that are giving it somewhat of that tropical character but then again it's some of that earthy piney kind of a kind of a quality to it as well and you're getting the wheat the wheat malt in there with that fluffy kind of a variety with the oats that at least in mouthfeel it's definitely telling me it's a wheat beer and then like i said the ibus are there but they're not huge and that spicy peppercorn thing is just like uh saison so i think if they name this I don't know if they named it White Saison, it would even be correct. I think so. Uh, I don't know exactly. I will get back to you on that, but I'm gonna at least tell you two thumbs up right now. This is damn good for what it is. They might have put some Brettanomyces in it. If they did, I wouldn't be surprised. But it doesn't quite taste that that it tremendously funky. But it's sort of along those lines. So you could be right about that. But so far, yeah. so good. Yeah, I think I think Blue Moon generally has a little bit more flavor and interest uh, level than what you get from a Samuel Adams yeah. body pack. Definitely, definitely light to medium body, crisp, clean, ultra refreshing. And I am just curious to hear all about Jerry Fort's beer he brought this evening. <laughs> um, on my tasting notes, you mean? Yeah, I'm. I'm getting. The, I'm getting the. You know the 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 banana beers um which beer are you drinking this evening by the way i've got the i've got the ho garden can you see there that? you go who garden that was developed in 1965 by pierre sellers peter sellers all right pierre sellers mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's just it's a very smooth um smooth little beer um you can get the you get the spices in it and you get you know the the wheat um it's a good beer mm -hmm. jerry what's the abv 4.9 okay thank you and that's a belgian import yes sir i think we only get about uh, correct me if i'm wrong jay do we only get just the blue just the blue moon just the who garden from from those guys is that all we get in, in the united states Okay, <clears throat> good que that's a good question. If you get on the Who Garden website, they've got Who Garden. That's the one from nine from fifty three years ago. Okay, that's the one that revolutionized uh, really the whole uh, wheat beer uh, thing. All right, um, but if you get on their website, they produce probably five to ten other variants that we sadly do not get. All kind. Of like red and super strong and um, like a rosé or something. 
Yeah, right. It's incredible. It's like, why did they not sell it here? People would buy it, right? Like, come on, get real. But no, we don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about, as you were saying, that I'm definitely noticing from the Blue Moon that I am getting that characteristic of that, of a, just a little bit of a banana and some of that bubblegum characteristic. But there's so much to do with the yeast and there's so much to do with the hops that they're using and this peppercorn note that that unfortunately the only downside to this being a white IPA is is that I think all of the hopping even though it's 45 IBUs I think the hopping and the yeast character it, well I mean the yeast character is a characteristic of wheat beer but I think the amount of yeast that's in the bottle and the amount of hopping that's done in the beer is is almost taking over the fact that the base, you know, deep down below is actually a Belgian white style beer. Right. But I mean, you know, it's not a really, it's not anything really called a white IPA. It's just sort of like a, right. a little thing they threw together to make it interesting. And it is interesting. I've had it. And I've reviewed it. <laughs> it's the same thing when Allagash Brewing Company up in Portland, Maine makes a Makes a makes a Belgian black stout. No such thing as that. But they kind of took ideas from each region that makes really good stouts and and good regions that make Belgian beers, and they put it together and it works well. And I could not say that this doesn't work well. But but once I started thinking about it, then is where I got the banana and the clove. But if I wasn't really thinking, trying to find that, I probably wouldn't have found that. Oh, Eric, let me interrupt real fast. Um, and William, write this down, please. Here's another idea for one of your hangouts, seafood beers. If you see it with food, you drink it, what? You know, beers made with uh, shell, you know, uh, fruits de mar, you know, uh, beers made with seafood products. Like we drank an oyster stout the other day made with oysters, or uh, you can get the Budweiser Clamato Chilada made with clam broth. How about a video uh, uh, examination of beers made with fish or mollusks um michael komaroff <laughs> yes or no i would try to find it but i think it might be hard i think i can get that chileto one but i usually don't buy those but i mean if i if everybody else is doing it i would do it well let's do this right now raise your hand to the camera if you would review those kind of beers on this preview channel Oh man, I guess we're doing it. All right, I would do. I would find one. <laughs> I'll put I'll it on the one. calendar for February. Let's do it. <laughs> could be oyster beer. Could be clam. Could be catfish. Catfish beer sounds weird. <laughs> Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lobster. There is a lobster. There's a lobster bisque beer. Apparently, yeah, it's called disaster ale. <laughs> You're from, you know, you're from Massachusetts. You ought to be touting lobster beer and trying to get everybody to drink it, not ripping it. You should drink beer and eat lobster, not drink lobster and eat beer. <laughs> I'm in Louisiana. I should be promoting crawfish beer, but oh God. I, don't oh. know any, I don't know of any such item. Let's do a beer review examination on beers your mama wouldn't drink. All right. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, is so everybody, if, is everybody ready for mine? Oh, go right ahead. <clears throat> I've been waiting. Okay. I forgot about you. How? I'm sorry. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Kind of like a hazy golden color. In your yeah. Samuel Smith glass, once again. In my Samuel Smith glass. The nose is, like I said before, banana and bubble gum. Little bit of <laughs> clove, but the clove is in the background. It's not a strong smell. You can smell the wheat, and if you look at this beer too, it's got a lot of floating articulates. You know, like floaties. I guess that's the yeast that's floating in there. Oh, floaties! All right, not a lot, but some. And um, let me give it a taste. You get a like a bready, yeasty taste, and you can taste the malt in the beer as well. And you're drinking a six-point beer, is that correct? No, this is from Germany. From oh, Boulder. that's right. Not six point this evening. That's right. What's the name, what's the name of it again? Walter's 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Walters Vi we right. Oh, Vison. All right, I gotcha. I think it's pronounced reason, like wheat. Oh, reason. really? Okay. What did I hear? 5.3% alcohol, and it goes down very easily. It's, you know, it's a session beer. I like it. I think it's good. And the company has been making beer since 1627. I don't know how long they've been making this one. Is that your first time? Is this your first time drinking that beer? No, I've had it before. As Jake, I, as Jake can tell you, I think you probably got yours here. It was it's very reasonably priced. Yeah, the the Volta's beer is like two ninety nine a can or something like that. Two fifty, two forty nine, two ninety. It's, it's sixteen ounces, so I mean it's it's decent. Not, it's not as, bad. Not, at it's, all. Not as, it's not as cheap as William Kepley's, but no, <laughs> he got the best deal of the night. That that's a bargain beer. But from a German company, so see it, it 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 works. William, what did you? What were you drinking? I, I think I missed uh, yours. I was when I was having those technical issues. A Blue Moon Belgian White Clone called Blue Key, which is a private house label of the little supermarket chain, which has entered the United States. They've been a big player in Germany. They're a major competitor of Aldi. Wow! And I got a six pack for three ninety nine. Yes. Wow, if that's one just, heck of a deal. How, how can you beat that? Uh, no, <clears throat> and it's fresh. The date is, is uh, April the 25th. It's, it's like at, a, at Rochester and the Genesee Brewery in Rochester, New York. Oh, contracted by right. World Brews is the middleman who joins the retailer with the brewer. They say, it. and uh, but 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 that's what it should be. It, it's priced to sell. You know, if, if, it, if it sells the same price as a Blue Moon, it's like the old, the old French saying, raison d'etre, what's the yeah. reason to be? There's no reason for it to exist. But at this price, somebody might give it a chance and actually right. pick it up. Oh, and William, that's the same people that are making the Trouble Brewing line at right. Walmart. Which they have a wheat beer in their lineup that right. I think is pretty good. Right, it's probably very similar. I like the Trouble Brewing wheat beer. Let's see the and nice thing about the Lidl supermarket is they're also partnering with local craft breweries to brew some beers. I see Foothills beers at Lidl. The address is Foothill Breweries in Winston Salem. Nice. But it's just a, they just use a different name. That's cool. And Star Hill is doing some brewer, some beers for uh, Lidl. Star Hill in Virginia. So they seem to have a pretty good uh, market business model going for these. And I hope they're successful because heck, the, the day after they moved here in North Carolina to my hometown, I would have dropped the price of their potato chips 50%. <laughs> Walmart lowered wow. their prices on food. They're having an impact. Yeah, and uh, I know that Trader Joe's, who's owned by Aldi, they do the same thing. They use craft breweries to make a lot of their products, like uh, uh, all the KBC, Kenny Bunkport Brewing Company, uh, craft beers for Trader Joe's that's that's shipyard beers yeah I gotta I gotta ask uh, and I apologize for not really knowing this information off the top of my head but I know that the beer review guy is joining us here Jerry Ford I know that he's reviewed not only just beer but practically every kind of a beverage under the sun that you can get in America <laughs> so what are your thoughts on on like store brands and maybe even like store brand beers do you look down on those things or what's your overall consensus on those I think that well here in uh, in Oklahoma um, the the new um, beer law or alcohol law uh, hasn't passed yet it's supposed to pass later on this year but um, you can't buy anything anything more than four percent all in uh, in grocery stores convenience stores around Oklahoma but that's supposed to change pretty soon um, but uh, different is the is the ABV store-bought beer so that may be the only thing you really notice the difference on is the alcohol content sure. you really get you still get the flavor you know the flavor and all the other characters in the so, um, that's really the you know the only the only difference is just the alcohol content I'm just the same right we have a uh, we have Bart Robinson just quickly, we got Bart Robinson saying he's okay, enjoying a German wheat beer by the name of Koning Ludwig. Curious if anyone has ever 
had or seen that. I like it a lot, he says. Yes, I've been made a video review for it and it's posted. I've had it. It's pretty it's pretty good. I've never had it. King King Ludwig, it's a it's a, I think it's made by Paul Honor, the same Paul Honor group. Yeah. Harry, I'd like I'd like to ask you, in Oklahoma, can you get the high ABV beers? At liquor stores. At liquor oh, yes, stores. Sir. In other words, I'm talking about if you do I don't know if you get dogfish head or not, but I'm talking about beers that are in the 15, 16, 18 percent range. Because I know there are states where you can't. Um, yes, sir. Um anything that high. Yeah, maybe like like sixteen percent and some of the the type of the, the malt liquor type stuff like the flavored malt liquor like the four locos. I think I've seen it in like sixteen percent. Wow. And, wow. But only at liquor stores. Is that something that you would uh review on a Wednesday night there, uh Michael Cormor? I don't think probably not. You don't think so, right? Probably no. not. No four loco review on a Wednesday. No, we're we're passing on four <laughs> loco, but um, All right. nothing, it's nothing personal about it. <laughs> yes, for me, I hate it. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. John H. Pierre, he might review the four loco, then he might drink it and go, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't need that in my life. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> but I went when, through. I did camo. Camo was bad enough. <laughs> uh, great tasting beers that I will never enjoy. Uh oh. You're lucky. I think we get that four local goal, though it's not really that common or predominant. By four local goal, I mean it's 14 percent. I've actually I tried I, that. You that did. was one of the that was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my life. <laughs> you got sick after that, did you? No, I just, it was just so sickeningly sweet and uh, cloying. And I mean, I mean, it was just, I don't know. I, I felt <laughs> like I had type 2 diabetes when I got finished with the can. You needed Wil Wilfred Brimley <laughs> to give you some uh, Liberty Medical Care. Right. right. It's that horrible. I've never tried it. Yeah. So um, let's go. This, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I want to know. I was just going to ask this, you. Yeah. Ask yeah. The tingling summer weed is very enjoyable. It's, you know, I've been looking at it here, holding it up uh, in the light. It's really not that cloud for wheat beer. Yeah, I, um, nice glass. I, I swirl. Like thank you. Yeah. Um, I swirled around the, the bottom of it. This is a terrible angle because I'm using my phone, but it's really not very cloudy. Uh -huh. um, so I'm wondering, I was looking on the bottle. I, I don't know if it's filtered at all because um, a lot of the wheat beers that are not filtered, they'll say unfiltered on the bottle or can. I don't see that here. But it poured with a pretty thick head. You know, I poured it right down the middle of the glass. Uh, it's got a it's got a really nice aroma on it. Uh, you get a lot of banana in the nose. Uh, you get some of that bubble gum that you guys were talking about. Um, and then in the taste, you know, it's, it's very smooth and easy drinking. It's very light bodied. I mean, which most of the wheat beers that I've had are very light bodied. Uh, now that IPA that you have, Eric, I'm sure is probably a little bit heavier. Um, but you know, very light bodied, and it's got a you know a semi dry finish. It's not really like a super dry finish like you get with your AALs, but it is fairly dry. Um, but you know, I would give this one for a wheat beer. I mean, I would definitely give it an A within the category. It's it's excellent for what it is and. I would definitely buy it again because, uh, like I said earlier, my favorite wheat beer, one of my favorite wheat beers is the Franz Conner Hefeweizen, and this is very comparable to that, and it's actually a little bit cheaper. And um, I don't know what the ABV on this is. It doesn't say on the bottle, but it's probably, you know, maybe between 4.5 and 5%. It definitely is very light. You don't pick up on any of the alcohol in the taste. Uh, 4.8. There you 4. go. 4.8. I think so, yeah. Very light from my memory. But, um, but that's what yeah. you want. That's what you want in the summertime, though. You want that that kind of a drinkability and lightness to it. Exactly. Yeah, you could uh, you could drink four or five of these, no problem. And on a hot summer day, after you know mowing the lawn or you know out by the pool, something like that, this would be the perfect beer to have. 
It is one of the better wheat beers you can get a hold of. It's cheap too, you know. I, I would probably give mine a B plus rating. It's not quite an A beer. It's maybe about a B plus. And if I'm going to do it numerically, which I've been trying to do also, maybe about an 88. Does that sound like a B plus? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's the same score I'd give the Blue Moon. There you go. Just not your cup of tea. I guess either of you, Jay or Michael Komarov, it just you, you you probably wouldn't be able to rate wheat beers like that any higher than that around that rating. I could if it was worth an A. I don't let my personal preference interfere with the rating. Um, if it's well, if it you know, Blue Moon is just not punchy enough to be an A, but it's a B plus is very good. I've given many wheat beers A scores even though i don't like them does if that makes sense it's not yeah. about me it's about the beer okay what's your thoughts on that michael Kormorov? i can think of maybe one or two i've had that were a's but for the most part i think it's the category is the problem right to me now again some every beer reviewer is different and you all look at it differently i don't find it to be an interesting style so maybe i'm a little harder on it than some but I try to be fair. And I got to know, I got to know now that we talked about Blue Moon and concluded with Blue Moon Belgian wheat, um, what what uh, William Kepler's overall thoughts on the Blue Key Blue Moon knockoff are. I think they knock it off pretty well. You know, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just not the style I prefer, but for the, for what it is, I think it's pretty good. It's It's above average. But it just doesn't have, like Jay said, it doesn't have a punch in the flavor profile. Yeah. It's rather bland. It's mild. And <coughs> and on a hot summer day, if it's 90 degrees and you just got finished mowing the lawn, I probably would grab a <coughs> Miller High Life over this. Sure. You know, because these do, I was drinking this and probably, I was trying to drink it at the optimum temperature, r roughly 40, 45 degrees. And it's still... It just the flavor just doesn't jump out. You, you get some of that orange peels, the zestiness, the spiciness, the oats in it give a little bit of a creamy mouthfeel, and it goes down pretty refreshing. But it just it just uh, sort of like the it's like the donut hole. The, the flavor in the middle there just isn't a punch of flavor in the middle of the sip, and that's what I really look for in a beer that is quote unquote you know craft or or a gateway beer like this probably rather than a your craft beer sure and that's that's the way i would view it who garden what would you rate that one what are your thoughts final <clears throat> conclusions jerry for the beer review guy <laughs> uh well i most of you guys know i don't i don't really handle but if i was going to rate it um the who garden would be Probably like most of you guys say, you know, a B close to an A, if not an A. It's a good, it's a good beer. It's got those flavor characters that you all mentioned. Um, I, I forget to mention the bubble gum, which think about it. I, I get the bubble gum, mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, a little bit of the orange. You get the spiciness, um, and like Jay always says, the breadiness. Um, you get those characters right off but when you mention it and then i think about it like okay yeah that's there <laughs> but uh um it's a good it's a good beer and it's like w what most of you gentlemen say it's a good for just uh summertime if, if you have it you drink it for just to refresh yourself after working around the house and yard or whatever but uh yeah it's just run of the mill type it's got it's it's got its time to drink it and <laughs> Excellent. William, Excellent. William, would you say that the blue key is a B or higher? B, a solid B for the style, I think. Okay. I don't really. And uh, I'm drinking a doubled wall glass here. Nice. I like that. I got this at Dollar Tree for 50 cents. <laughs> wow. All right. Another bargain. Uh, really like the job of maintaining the temperature has not changed a bit on it. Cheap beer and a cheap uh, glass. That's right. It, it, cheap is the theme. But for 50 cents, I mean, it's pretty darn good. 
I I I I gotta I gotta mention the price and, and my final conclusions. That's neat. On, on the Blue Moon uh, here, the Blue Moon White <clears throat> IPA. Now the Blue Moon White IPA was a six pack for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I think potentially, if it were maybe around seven ninety nine. Or even maybe a dollar cheaper at eight ninety nine, that would be a better value. But yeah. still, but still, it's I don't even know if you can tell. It still is, yeah. It's still pouring out that wheat oh. sediment to it. Wheat the best juice. way to the best way to get Blue Moon is to get the variety pack because you can get a twelve pack variety yeah. usually for about fourteen ninety nine. So yeah, and and I might at some point this year try that because this white IPA is really is a really really great beer and i don't think i could have been able to tell you that if it didn't have the blue moon name on it i personally wouldn't be able to really decipher that this couldn't have been like a dogfish head or a stone or like a ballast point by that i mean it of a craft beer that has some pretty good quality control and distribution to it it seems like it's one of the major players in flavor to a lot of craft beer, which is amazing. I I, I, w I walked by the apricot wheat from the Brewer Select from Blue Moon, and then I saw this one, and I went, well, I need a wheat beer, and I guess this one seems like it could be up my alley, and it really is. It's a white ale, in Bel a Belgian white ale in style. It's got those IPA, citrusy, piney, bitter notes, and because of this peppercorny yeast component to it, it's reminding me a lot of a traditional saison, and, and all those things are are really well, really well done. It's got all the spices. Yes, it does have some orange peel in it. It's got the again hoppy notes, and the tropical notes to it, and it does have the wheat beer elements, nice and fluffy and smooth and medium to light, crisp, clean, ultra refreshing. Um, you know, for what they're doing, they I don't know if if they call that a Belgian white ale on beer advocate or if it's like a fruit vegetable ale or an american ipa or maybe they could call it an american wheat ale and if this is an american wheat ale there probably are better ones out there than this but for what they're <laughs> trying to do on this this is a at least just plain old ordinary a range i don't know about the the number maybe maybe if i was to give it a real number it might get just a plain old 90 out of 100 it's actually really surprisingly great so that, uh, that'd be more like an A minus, but uh, I'm surprised by it, yeah. But that Pacific wheat, I tried it and it was total dynamite. Huh. Interesting. Oh yeah, it was tick 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 boom dynamite. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, my thoughts, my my overall thoughts when it comes to wheat ales, uh, wheat anything, wheat beers, could be a lager, could be an ale, who knows. But like I said in the beginning, and I'm going to stick to that, especially with the white IPA, this is a great example of this, where I think wheat ales and wheat lagers and wheat beers and beverages with the wheat can really be a gateway kind of into more flavorsome beers. I think they, they, they pack a lot more flavor, although some of them can be duller than others, as we described with the Blue Moons and the Who Garden and the Blue Key. Um, I think they can really be step ups in the right direction if you want to explore more craftier beer styles and really get used to different flavors, easy flavors and, and notes that you can pick up in a beer. And they and it's just like with anything craft beer or beer in general, they can be all kind of price ranges. They can come from the United States and they can come from abroad. Our white beer style that most of us had are a Belgian beer style, the Hefeweizen kind of like uh, John O'Neill is drinking there, is from a German style. So Germans make really great wheat beers. Belgians make really great wheat beers. Hell, because we're in America, we take inspiration from everywhere. So we even do really great wheat beers. So give it a try if you're a newbie to craft beer. If you're even a newbie to beer, wheat beers may be a good place to start. So I recommend wheat beers to you all out there. Eric, before I just – go ahead, Jay. No, I was going to say, yeah, why not? What you before got? I, before I made my decision which one to do, I had looked at a Bell's um, Winter White, which wow. is a five percent. Again, it's a wheat beer, and I also had looked and Jay's reviewed some of these too. 
Trader Joe's has, you know, one of those Joseph Brow beers. They have a Belgian winter white also, which I have also. And I looked at that also. This was the only 16 ounce one I had. So I decided to do this because it gives me more to drink while I'm doing the review. The 12 out ones I finish quickly. Yeah. Then I usually have to have a second beer. This way, maybe it'll just be. I don't think I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I scored the Bell's white too high. I think I. It was. I said it tasted too much like tap water. I didn't. Ooh. But I gotta know. I gotta know now that you're now that you're nearing or nearing completion or are done with your um, Volter's Weizen or Weizen beer. What are, have your overall thoughts and opinions changed with wheat beers? Or are you pretty much the same from when you started it's, on this it's, review? It's pretty much the same, I guess. As a, as a style, I go along with the consensus. It doesn't pack enough of a punch to me that it could ever be my favorite or even my sixth or seventh favorite. A go-to style? No. It would be something that I would have when you guys decide you want to try wheat beers. Otherwise, I'm not bothering <laughs> with it. And in the summertime, when I want something, I'm drinking IPAs because I like that style better. And I find it more sure. refreshing. So I like yeah. IPAs better. But I'm not saying anybody here and in the world <coughs> Go for it. You like Blue Moon? Go for it. What are your thoughts, uh, William Kepley? Are they the same as when you started with the wheat beers, or have they changed? Pretty much so. But this is the last the six pack of these that I purchased, and I enjoy each one a little bit better. <clears throat> it's sort of it's sort of growing on me a little bit. Yeah. You know the fact that it you know it, it's sort of challenging to try to with these beers that, that don't knock you out with the flavor. It's sort of challenging to try to pick out the things that you know what make it. And you know, just for the style of it is, and, and you sort of analyze it rather than just critique it. And you know, it's it's turned out to be okay. And one thing I did notice this this one has a lot of particular matter in it. A lot of stuff is swimming around there. So, uh, and it's very cloudy. So I think you know, which adds to their. They did a good job cloning the blue moon. And I would pick at this at three ninety nine a pop, especially during the summertime. I would definitely buy this again. I think that sounds good. Yeah, yeah there's almost with the beers that I prefer on a daily basis, and this would be something an outlier to drink occasionally. Except for like a Trader Joe's, and I don't even know of any other establishments in New England, or at least in the southeastern part of Massachusetts, and even into Rhode Island. Um, I just don't notice that we have a lot of um, what, like the Blue Key, except for at a, like a Trader Joe's or something like that. We don't really have, and then, you know, Costco and maybe like a BJ's, which is another wholesale club in New England. I just don't notice that we get a lot of these house brand beers, ex like I said, except for Trader <clears throat> Joe's, which is the big one. So I've not really ever been to a, to a store where I can try a lot of these lower priced, but, you know, craftier kind of beers, nor do we get these house brands of the lagers and the adjunct lagers and the light beers at Walmarts or Targets or anything like that because I just have never seen in New England that we get beers in Walmarts or Targets or Sam's Wholesale Club or anything like that. So I guess maybe more towards the south, you get a little bit more spoiled with that stuff. So Very I would love to try so. those kind of things. Very much so because Walmart, which is only about a half a mile from my house, sells all sorts of beers, including, the house, including private label brands, and all kind of wine and hard liquor that you can yeah. put right off the shelf, and it's not behind the counter. But unless anybody else has any has any close and any other remarks and closing thoughts, we uh, we're about to call this thing a examination this evening. So, so Aldi Aldi has a version what? of the Blue Moon Belgian white. It's called Blue Kinru. Wow. That's and it name. is brewed, it's actually brewed in Belgium at one wow. of the main breweries in Belgium. And 5% versus 5.4 for this one. I haven't seen it at the Aldi here in my hometown, but uh, I may try it sometime too, just to, for comparison's sake. Well, well there you we, go. We have we have Aldi's here, but they don't sell beer. They do oh. in Vermont and Connecticut. So, I mean, I could. Really? But, but wow. again, you're not going to travel to Connecticut to get Aldi's beer. Yeah, you know, hell I, no. I had a friend who brought me some back, and they're very average. Right. Just average. Just average. I'll see y'all next week, probably. Hey, Jay, 16 ounces or better. 
My so, 16 ounce, my 16 ounce is about to pop out the fridge, ready to roll. So, so here's what we got. You brought that up. You brought that up. That's a good point. So I have at least the next two weeks thought out. Other than that, we'll have to collaborate. So next week we have the, I'm calling it tall beers, at least a 16 ounce American fluid ounce or larger of a can or a bottle or growler if you want, whatever is a good beer size for you. That leaves it up to interpretation what to bring. And then the week following that, I'm choosing to do craft lagers. So bring a bring a any style of lager, whether it's a darker lager or a pale lager from a sort of a craftier beer brand or a craft brewery, and <clears throat> let's review them. Let's do it. Why not? The, week, the weekend after that is Valentine's Day, so think up something very valentine -ish. You want to do sexy beers? <laughs> seafood beers. Seafood beers. Oh, yeah, and the sexiest do, beer do on the do, planet. It's nothing do more. Do seafood beers on Valentine's Day? I'll put Hold it the phone. Then there's nothing more sexy than an oyster stout, all right? Oh, well, people go, to seafood, people, go, people go to seafood restaurants on Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day I, I would imagine. I don't know. If we'll they, come to a conclusion on that and we'll let you all know what we're going to plan. I don't know if they drink Budweiser clam made of gelato. At a, at a, <laughs> it's colored red. No. All right. So on the Valentine's Day theme, oysters are reputed to be a aphrodisiac. So it's true. To my head with those. <laughs> Jay, good beers. luck tomorrow in your alcohol tasting. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It'll be uh, very dark when I start. <laughs> if oysters are an aphrodisiac, then William Kepley better bring Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout. <laughs> <laughs> take care folks all right okay, take care bye bye we will let you know about <clears throat> in the next three weeks when we do craft loggers we will come to a conclusion on some kind of reviews going forward so again this has been white not even white just plain old wheat beer review with masters beer reviews again uh louisiana beer reviews just jumped off we had Jerry Ford, the beer review guy. Check his channel out. We got John and Neil. Uh, check him out here. We got my uh, <laughs> William Kepley. Check him out here. We got Michael Kormoroff. Get a channel, everybody. Check him out here. We had Red Bearded. Red Bearded. That's his channel from uh, Canada. Thomas Metal 75. Peace. <laughs>